On Ash Wednesday, the Church invites us to the observance of a Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Holy Word. Like many of you in the past, I have promised that I would give up or take on, and generally, I try to do both. Typically, I promise to resist those things I should have given up after the holidays, such as breakfast treats and fancy coffees and ice cream before bedtime. And I promise to take on holy habits that are expected of me already, such as spending more time in reading and prayer and meditation. Maybe you find yourselves doing the same things with varying degrees of success. By the time Ash Wednesday comes this year, we will have lived with pandemic precautions for 11 months. Many have already given up an awful lot this past year, far more than we had expected in March of 2020. Many are already practicing self-denial or having denial imposed upon us. At the same time, some have taken on more than we could ever imagine especially if we are educating our children at home, working from home, or caring for family from a distance. Perhaps this is not the year to emphasize giving up or taking on, but to use the time for reflection, less emphasis on doing, and more emphasis on just being, a season to consider our past unfaithfulness, our unlovely thoughts, our uncharitable behavior, and other ways we have grieved God's heart. A few years ago, as Lent was approaching, I was complaining to a colleague about the dreaded Lenten penance. What would I give up? What should I take on? When I stopped whining, he looked me in the eye and said, Do you have a junk drawer at home? What if you pulled out the junk drawer, and for 40 days, Every day of Lent, you just pick up an object from the junk drawer and look at it. Think about what you used it for. How did it end up in the junk drawer? What memories does it evoke? Think about yourself, the place you were spiritually when you added it to the junk drawer. So perhaps this year, rather than giving up or taking on, we should stay close to home and stay still. Let this be the year we remain still enough to sense the comfort of the Holy Spirit in our weakness. Let this be the year we observe Lent by observing our surroundings, whatever and whoever is close by, noticing God's presence in our homes. May this be a fruitful season of penitence, prayer, meditation, and reflection for each of us.